Guys, I wanted to revisit something that we just talked about just the other night as we were in the backyard listening to worship and there was a devotion time about the hand of God. It's Pastor Gary here talking about that which comes our way based on heaven's intervention, God's hand moving in favor of his people. Now, recently I've been reading some articles coming out of Israel where commanders of the Iron Dome, this missile defense program that they have in Israel, are speaking about how it is that there's times that that missiles are being fired at Israel by Hamas over in Gaza, and the missiles get through the defense system. The defense system isn't able to take them out, and they know within just several hundred yards where that missile is going to strike. And so often they're already calling on the phone and saying, hey guys, one's going to get through, it's going to hit a school, it's going to hit a hotel, get the ambulances rolling, get ready because this is going to be a mass casualty incident. Well, they are also talking about how it is that there's times when that happens that mysteriously, supernaturally, without any reason or provocation that they can understand, the missiles veer off course. As a matter of fact, there's been cases where they've reported that winds have come up where there was no wind and have blown missiles into the sea. Now, one of the commanders boldly stood up and and, and proclaimed that this is no doubt, without exception, the hand of God moving to protect Israel. He said, I've seen it with my own eyes. And if you're going to believe in God, we also then have to believe in miracles. And you know what? It makes perfect sense. Our God is a God of miracles. And because of that, why would it seem strange? Why would we take God out of the equation by moving his hand for our protection? The question is, how do we recognize it? How do we see it? Now, we know that scripture talks about the hand of God. And we're not talking about a literal hand that would appear from the sky and come down and move traffic or open up a congested street for us to be able to make our way through. And while God is capable at any point in time of using physical and tangible means by which in order to provide provision and protection for us, all what we're talking about is recognizing the attitude and the character of God and how it is that he works within the lives of those that he loves. The first thing that we have to do is we have to know and recognize what the hand of God looks like, familiarize ourselves with it so that we would not only look for it, but recognize it in advance. 2 Timothy in chapter 3 verses 16 and 17 says this. It says that all scripture is given by the inspiration of God and that it's profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness, that the man, and I say, or woman of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. Now, the first thing that we have to establish is we have to understand that this means all scripture, everything in the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. It's been given to us. It is the word of God and it is profitable for us. Now, what does it mean to be profitable? It means it's something that we can rely on. As we would rely on the word of God, we're going to profit from its wisdom. We're going to prosper from its wisdom. Profitable for doctrine means that I can take and build my life on that which God's word says because it will not let me down. Oh, and then it goes on and talks about reproof and correction. The idea of knowing what is wrong and right. What is that which is good and that which is evil? How do I know if I'm making the right decision? How do I know if it's a wrong decision? How do I know if it's a good relationship or a bad relationship or if I should should move in this direction or that? The word of God, God's hand guiding us through his word is beneficial for reproof and correction to show me and to demonstrate to me the way that God would would move me and have me to follow him. And it isn't a matter of me taking and trying to pick and choose from God's word or using it like a Ouija board or something where I can go in there and find what I want to know. No, I need to know God's in, in word entirely so that it dictates to, guides, directs, and gives direction to my life. The idea here is that, that it's not a matter of trying to just agree with that which I agree or disagree with that which I disagree. Because here's the deal. Whether you disagree with God or not, it doesn't matter. He's God. He's right. And we should never take the opinion or be worried about how it is that the world would disagree with God. You know what? There's things in the Bible that other people don't like. There's things in the Bible that they don't agree with. There's things in God's word that he says are sin that other people don't want to believe are sin. You know what? That's not my problem. If you have a problem with God's Bible, you need to take it up with God because I choose to believe and side with him. Well, I feel that that's the appropriate and the right thing to do. And I'm going to try to side with God because I think he's right.
as opposed to others. Now, it also talks about instructions and right, righteousness. God's word not only identifies right from wrong, but it will tell us that which pleases God, that which is righteous in his eyes, that which we can do that is not based on other people's standards, but it's based on God's standards. And above all, then I would be able to be a man who is doing that that is pleasing to God in my life by virtue of looking to and following after and seeking after his righteousness. The goal, the end result for this, in order for me to see God's hand moving in my life, is that it provides for me this thorough equipping. Everything that I need for life and godliness, everything that I need is contained within God's word. And so in order for me to see the hand of God moving... I've got to know what it looks like. I've got to know what God looks like through his word. The other thing is, is that I need to communicate with God. I need to pray. I need to be one who is seeking out the things of God through communication with God. Now understand, praying to God is not a matter of trying to get him to see things our way. It's a matter of aligning our thoughts with his. So if I know who he is through his word, if I pray to be aligned with his things and his will for my life as I know him through his word, what I'm going to find, well, is I'm going to find that I'm going to see God's hand moving in my life without any exception. Oh, and then lastly, we've got to trust God. We've got to trust him when we don't see him moving. We've got to trust that he's going to move even when we don't think that he is or don't see any signs of it. So guys, here's a simple process. You want to see God's hand move in your life. You want to see miracles. You want to see God actively engaged in your life on a day-to-day hour by hour, minute by minute basis, then we do it through a process of knowing who he is through his word, communicating to him through prayer and aligning our will with his will. And then lastly, by trusting him, by trusting that he is who he says he is, he'll stand firm and and fulfill all of his promises because he is the God in whom we can trust. God bless you. I hope that this helps you to understand that God is actively seeking to engage himself with you. And we miss so many opportunities. We miss so many times in our lives where God was right there and doing something because we didn't know what to look for. Look for God to move. He's a good God. He loves you. He is gracious. He wants to take and move in our lives in such a way that we have the love and the joy and the peace that he provides. We'll see you soon at Calvary Chapel, Dayton Valley. This week in Come Out, we're going to be in 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and celebrating the things that God brings to his kids through his word as we do every week. We hope to see you soon. God bless you.